presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robert, how you doing, man? Yes, good, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner and primary breadwinner for my family. And if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, well, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling a problem with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Good afternoon, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. Take a look at what we got going on today. We have the ES Mini about flat today. The Russell up about 0.15%. NQs again just down slightly 0.22%. The Dow futures up about 0.29. We kind of have a flat market today. Um, some of the bonds kind of going down in price. We'll talk a little bit about that and what that kind of means for rates going forward. We have Tesla uh, kind of got eviscerated uh, the other day, up about 0.6% currently. Uh, but trading from about a monthly high of 265 down to 239. Steel Dynamics down. We were looking yesterday at about 120. Um, kind of volatile right now, at least for the price. Um, down about 1.69% today. Take a look at some of the more base metals here. We have gold. That was actually trading up a bit. Uh, we're at 2,051 on the contract. Uh, and then silver really gave up a lot of its gains up from that peak of about 2635, trading right now at 2322. Copper staying pretty strong, like that contract at $3.84. Crude oil, so there's a lot of stuff going on that's gonna impact, I think, energy prices here. Uh, there's a lot of tension in the Red Sea. Uh, a lot of oil kind of moves through this area. We had the shipping giant Maersk um, resume shipping through there. Now, I mean, a lot of supplies go through the Red Sea. Uh, so, you know, this tensions impact uh, a lot of things, uh, but oil will be uh, number one in here. And I think we're going to see a jump. We'll talk a bit about that. I get concerned with seeing this oil jump. Um, you know, prices have actually been pretty low recently, even at the pump uh, for a lot of consumers, which is awesome. Uh, if there's anything that kind of gets, you know, impacted on the oil end here and prices go up, it's obviously going to skew the uh, total CPI. Uh, that might cause some kind of uh, reaction in a way that we don't all like, especially for holders. Let's take a look a little more. The dollar trading flat right now. We're at 102.43, looking probably to retest around the 103 area. You know, a higher dollar, you know, that gets a more depressed market. Um, and we haven't seen a lot of movement in the way that we would like to see the dollar move. QQQ sideways, Google down about 1.09%. Meta. Pretty, pretty low, pretty sideways at least, rather. About 347.28. Disney uh, down at 90, so we're trading down about a buck uh, from yesterday. Apple at 182.47 in the SPY, we're trading at 468.96. Uh, took a look at, you know, the kind of global market as a whole. Uh, the Eurozone is anticipating uh, pretty intense inflation. Um, Inflation is still rising in the Eurozone, even though they believed that things were going to kind of pull back like we're seeing here. Uh, now, this is bringing some doubts over rate cuts. Of course, you know, we're not the Eurozone, but this does impact us in some capacity. Um, essentially, the French released their figures earlier this morning. Um, was rising about 4.1%, which is OK, but that's up from 3.9% from November. Uh, so we are seeing an increase there. Um, Germany is getting really hammered with it. It's about to be released here. It's going to be a jump basically 3.8% uh, from 2.3% in November. If we see this kind of spread out, uh, we might have a more prolonged kind of stage of seeing rates going to get pulled back. Right? We spoke about yesterday how the Fed is kind of thinking about we're going to reduce some rates. Uh, they didn't release kind of a roadmap for that. They said probably by the end of the year, uh, we'll have three quarter 
point uh, reductions. But still, you know, if you get something like we were talking about with oil that comes in and prices get kind of skewed. And again, I, I know that's not the core CPI, uh, but, but I think one of the things that bothers me about all of that is if core CPI is bad, um, but, you know, energy is lower, you know, for that reporting cycle, then it's a good thing. Um, obviously, if CPI in general is as high, but core CPI down, that's a good thing. There's this spin that exists, right, um, that kind of just persists in the media, especially when CPI is released. Uh, I have a feeling that if, again, if energy gets a lot higher this next kind of cycle, we might see some of that kind of euphoria coming from the uh, talk about a pullback in rates kind of dissipate. We might see some sell-off. Not sure. We'll have to wait to see on that. We take a look a little bit more about this. Uh, the oil contracts really are surging. Let's take a look here. Are we? We're sideways right now, 7223. Uh, in the Brent, again, we just have a little bit of this tick up here. Uh, Yesterday, they were surging around 3%. There's obviously protests over high fuel prices, uh, at least in Libya. This affects um, oil fuel production in Libya. That completely halted it entirely. Um, there's ongoing concerns over Yemen's, uh, the Houthis, which are backed by Iran. Of course, there are some issues with um, Iranian drones hitting uh, some big shipments, essentially, right? So this whole area is under a lot of kind of intensity. And again, if this gets impacted, these trade routes get impacted, we might see a bad uh, total CPI going forward. Take a look here. We're going to look at Ford just for some other news during the day. Uh, up about 7.1% in the U.S. Uh, vehicle sales, rather. Best year since 2019 for Ford. Take a look. Sales increased about 7% last year, marking the automaker's best sales since 2020 coming in lower than the overall industry's growth. Ford on Thursday reported sales of nearly 2 million vehicles in 2023, which is 7.1% increase from the previous year. Uh, the company finished third in overall U.S. sales. That is trailing Toyota and General Motors. Ford's overall 2023 sales are lower than the industries, which auto data uh, firms topped about 15.6 million total uh, of last year. Of course, we've been seeing Ford try to get into the electric vehicle uh, area. Again, I, I think some of these old kind of traditional vehicle makers are going to have a hard time pivoting away because their infrastructure just isn't really focused on that. Uh, Volkswagen has been doing a good job. We'll talk a little bit uh, about them in the coming segments. They're I have a deal with Quantum Scope, okay, and these guys make a solid state lithium battery. We'll talk a little bit about that, but it was actually majorly successful. Um, this was positive for Volkswagen. QuantumScape went up like, let me see here. Yeah, almost 50% today. So we'll talk a little bit about why that is and what that kind of technology, uh, how that plays a role and how it may impact other companies like Tesla uh, and so on. So folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I think we will have Tim Ord on pretty soon. I think we got an interesting market, too, to have Tim on. So, anyways, in the interim, let's take a look. Some of the reports going on that were positive, and I, I want to give like a little, maybe a little bit of opinion on this and what this kind of means. Anyways, uh, the U.S. applications for unemployment benefits fall again as job market continues to show strength. The number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits fell last week as the labor market continues to show resilience despite elevated interest rates. Uh, jobless claims fell to 202,000 for the week ending December 30th, down from about 18,000 the previous week. Four-week average of claims, which evens out some of the week-to-week -week volatility, fell by about uh, 4,750 to 207,750. I all right. So this was the whole plan, right? You have uh, oh well, you'll have to you'll have to wait to listen. But now we have Tim Ord on. Tim, can you hear me? Yep, I sure can. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I I'm doing well. All rested from the uh, from the holidays. It's very good. So um, what are we uh, taking a look at today, Tim? All right. Uh, I, I sent you some charts. I assume you got them. I got them, yes. All right. Uh, let's take a, take a look. at. We'll start with chart one. Perfect. And um, anyhow, the, the bottom window is the uh, daily SPX. The next higher window is the uh, SPX VIX ratio, and the top window is the VIX. And what I want to point out, um, so when the, the S&Ps were going higher into, I think, the December 28th or 29th high, and the S&Ps were making higher highs, uh, that we're in the current time frame right now, and that's what's shaded in, uh, and basically shaded in pink there. Mm. Uh, those are the divergence times that I wanted to point out. But when the SPs are making higher highs in that ratio, which is a SPX VIX ratio, is the middle windows makes lower highs, you get a short term divergence. Now you can look at there's bigger divergence, smaller divergence. This is just a small divergence, and it can, and it can mean just a sideways market or, um, even a pullback, but usually not a major sign on the bigger time frames. But also, as the market pulls back, you want to look how deep that ratio goes. Uh, if you notice on today, we're, we're basically matching the uh, the uh, December twentieth low, which is the previous low 
we had here, and the SP is pretty much matching that low. If you notice, the SPX VIX ratio made a lower low, so now it's making lower highs and lower lows. I see, and and that's a, that's a pretty uh, decent divergence. Not saying these divergences can actually last a while, uh, so it doesn't mean we have already seen the top. But uh, I still think on a short-term basis, we are going to go back up one more time, possibly hit a new short-term high. And that will be the time uh, to look for a short position, but not now, uh, at least for my work. Could be wrong, but uh, I think there is a a good chance on a short-term basis uh, we're going to bounce up here, probably starting, if not today, tomorrow, and probably run into next week. And how high that rally goes uh, could set up the next sell signal. Uh, so, but on a short term basis here, I uh, also want to point out last week, uh, I think it was last week, uh, we're up five days in a row going into uh, December 29th or, or 28th, wherever that last high was. If the market's up five days in a row, normally 83% of the time the market will be higher within five days. Uh, so we're down. Uh, right now, we're down four days in a row. Right. So uh, tomorrow is the fifth day. Can we make new highs tomorrow? Probably not. But that's also another sign if we don't hit a, a new high within five days. Uh, but I still think we'll get a rally because that five days up period is usually never the, the final high. Usually you get some sort of attempt at least to go back up and match the high. So I still think there's a rally in front of us. But um uh, the next step is going to be pretty important. So, anyhow, that's the short-term picture. So, the short-term picture, probably a short-term bounce that could lead to a sell signal. So, what's that mean on a bigger time frame? So, let's flip to chart two. We have it up. All right, uh, chart two. Um, this is a weekly chart, so you really can't see the the little negative divergence on the daily chart. It's the same same chart, or it's the same. Uh, the same technical analysis, I guess, is here. The bottom window is the weekly SPX VIX ratio, and the middle window is the uh, SPX. I didn't, I didn't use the SPY, but this is on weekly time frames. And the, and the divergence work the same way. As the SPs go higher, you want that ratio, the SPX VIX ratio, go higher. And that's what's happening here. Uh, so we, on December rally, we broke above the July high, and if you look at the SPX VIX ratio, we did uh, that. Uh, we did break above the previous high, so that's all bullish on the weekly time frames. Uh, but on a shorter time frames, you know, in chart one, you know, we could see some up and down. Uh, probably what I'm thinking, probably a rally, maybe later this week, tomorrow or something, or the first part of next week, and we may hit a high or may not hit a new high. But ultimately, I think the pullback will take us back to 4,600 which is uh, basically the uh, high we had back in uh, late July. And I think that's probably going to find support and from there back up. So nothing real significant, normally uh, just a, probably a consolidation of some sort, um, maybe over the next couple of weeks, uh, maybe possibly into month in. I, I don't know. It, it doesn't look like anything really serious on the bigger time frame is going on here. Uh, but... Uh, Let's, let's, let's flip to uh, chart three real quick. All right. Here we got chart three up. All right. Chart three is, is kind of the, the bottom window is the SPA VIX ratio again. And I'm just showing you that the, yes, the ratio is making higher highs. And uh, you notice this is uh, the monthly, I believe. Um, yeah, it's a monthly SPX VIX ratio. Now, this, let's see, this chart goes back all the way back to the top we had back in 2022, late December. And if you notice, we haven't hit that, the SPX has not touched that high yet back in December 2022. It's a little bit lower. That high was 48-something, and we haven't quite hit that yet. Just a little bit shy of it. But if you go down to the bottom window, the ratio has already made higher highs. So at some point, we're going to break above the December 22nd high. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking we're probably pulling back to 4,600. And with the bigger time frames, the monthly ratios showing a bullish configuration, that 4,600 is probably going to be support. And at some point, we're going to start breaking above 
the uh, December 2022 high. How high is high? Well, I'm thinking what the pattern that's forming here on the monthly chart is the head and shoulders bottom, where the October, see, right. no, it looks, it looks like July is the uh, head, and this head and shoulders potential pattern has an upside target around 5,700. So ultimately, I think we'll hit that maybe this year, you know, probably later on the year. But if you notice that neckline I've drawn there uh, is at 4,600. That's uh, pretty close. I think we'll pull back there to, to get uh, to go. I hear the music. Awesome. So. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, stay tuned uh, or stay right there. We'll be back. Uh, interested to look at the other charts. We have, I think, about three more as well. Um, folks, stay right there. Um, Self and Tim Ord will be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoot Pillin for Tom O'Brien. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, are you still with us? I sure am. I'm right here. Awesome. So, uh, so yeah, we're still on uh, chart three, right? Go ahead. We're still on chart three? Uh, well, you know, I just point chart three, the bigger pattern is bullish. Uh, the right. weeklies look okay. The dailies are kind of uh, not real bearish, but probably a consolidation in January is what it's starting to look like. So uh, that's kind of sums up the first three charts. So let's, let's flip to chart four. All right, let's get this going here. I have chart four up. All right. Uh, the middle window is the monthly 
HUI gold index, and uh, it's, it's the ratio. And uh, this ratio, uh, in a nutshell, when the ratio is rising, is bullish. Uh, it's bullish, and when it's declining, what what happens when the gold stocks are outperforming gold? Gold and gold stocks are in an uptrend. When gold is outperforming. Uh, the gold stocks, usually the market's in a downtrend. And so all this is is the ratio, uh, and I use a Bollinger Band on it, and uh, the blue lines are when the Bollinger Bands, or when the, that ratio closes above the mid-Bollinger Band. The red lines are when uh, the line closes, or the, the index closes, or the HEY gold index closes below the mid-Bollinger Band. So back in 2011, high went bearish, never turned bullish until 2016. Now it stayed bullish for about a year, went bearish again for about a, a, maybe two years, bullish again in in uh, 2019 for a couple of years, and it's basically been bearish since 2021. And that's the red line. <coughs> Excuse me, that's the red line, and since it has not closed above it yet. But what I want to point out here, what's, what's really intriguing, notice the uh, Bollinger Bands on this ratio starting to squeeze, and uh, that would be the second window up from the bottom. Uh, that's the width of the Bollinger Band. And the, the, the squeezing of the Bollinger Bands suggests at some point the market, uh, you know, if you look there, uh, the, that ratio has been going sideways since about, mid-2022, so it's been going sideways for almost two years now, really. Mm-hmm. Hadn't gone up, went up a little bit, went down a little bit, and now it's trying to go back up, but really hadn't gone anywhere, and that's when the Bollinger Bands squeeze. And when those Bollinger Bands squeeze, it, it suggests at some point you're going to see an impulse wave. An impulse wave is more of a straight line move, so we're going to break out of this sideways consolidation and either go up or down, and it doesn't give you the direction, but most likely it's going to be up because – you can only stay down for so long. You know, the market's been going down since 2021. So now you got the Bollinger Band squeezing. And over the last couple of months, this ratio has been going up. So I think at some point we're going to cl- close above the mid Bollinger Band. And that's going to be a longer term buy signal. And these buy signals last at a minimum of a year and can last, you know, three, four years. So how long it's going to last, really don't know. But the second window up of, uh, from the uh, bottom is uh, where the Bollinger Band is squeeze. I guess the more squeeze it is, the more bigger that move is. Last time we got near this squeeze came back in, at the 2011 high, not quite to, as low as it's been, or quite as low as it was in 2011, but it's nearing that level. And that predicted, and that that was a major bear market. So this one. In my opinion, it's probably going to be a major bull market. So it's, a, it's something big is, is about to happen. It's not going to be years down the road. Uh, it's probably going to be months down the road, you know, but it's not going to be a whole lot of months down the road. But uh, we're going to break out of this trading range. And if you notice, you go to the top window there, that's the HUY index also. And if you notice, the Bollinger Bands are starting to squeeze together there also. Right, right here. Uh, so... Uh, so we got something that's about to happen probably within the next six months, maybe even the next three months. I don't know, but, uh, something big is, is, is going on, uh, with the gold market. So, uh, has it triggered the buy signal yet? No, but that, uh, HUI ratio needs to keep going up to get above that mid Bollinger band. And once that above the mid Bollinger band, I think a lot of stuff is going to, uh, you know, can it be explosive? I don't know. Explosive is the right word for it, but it's, it's going to be meaningful. I'll put it that way. Definitely. Um, and and I see for the other chart you have here as well, and, and this is something I've just been following because I, I think the the movement of it is more extreme compared to gold. Is you, you have silver going on here. So you have like the monthly silver yeah. on chart four. And I think this yeah, is going to be sure. fascinating sure. for everyone. Sure. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'm pulling it up sure. right now. It's on chart five. Chart, chart five. Yeah, chart five is real interesting. Um, this is the, the silver, uh, silver, silver gold miners. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get a drink here. I think we're both having the same but, thing there, uh, Tim. <laughs> yeah, this is, my throat gets dry. Yeah. Anyhow, this this chart is uh, 
real interesting too. The the bottom window is the SLV uh, silver ratio, and so this ratio has never been as cheap as it is right now. Mm-hmm. And the last time it was this cheap. In other words, this ratio is down. It's cheap compared to the uh, silver stocks are cheap compared to the price of silver. And the last time it's been this low was back at the 2016 low. And right after that, you know, the market screamed up. It went from basically 17 on SLI uh, up to about 45 or whatever, you know, and it, and it happened within a year. Uh, so cheapness were there. Uh, also, the next window up is the Bollinger Band spread again. And so we're as cheap as what uh, the spread as narrow as it is going back to uh, 2018. So that also, you know, the market's going sideways for almost, you know, year and a half, two years on the, on SLI. So silver stocks really just hadn't done anything yet. Right. But if you notice, we did close above the mid Bollinger band. You know, it's back down on it right now. I see. But you, you got the ratio at extremely valuation wise, extremely a good valuation. And you got the, the silver ratio above the mid Bollinger band. And I didn't draw those lines in there because the chart gets too messy. But every time in the past, you got to close above the mid Bollinger band. You had a multi month, if not a multi year rally. Uh, so the, the silver stocks may have already started their rallies, what I'm saying. Right. And we're very early in, in the stages. So uh, that's, uh, I guess, gold hasn't closed above its mid Bollinger band, but the silver stocks has. So silver. You also want silver to outperform gold because that's what happens bull markets. Bull markets, silver performs better than uh, than gold. So silver uh, should be taken off along with silver stocks here, along with uh, the Bollinger Bands uh, squeezing. So uh, we got chart six. Do we got uh, one more? We got time? Uh, yes. So we have about, about 20 seconds left. Uh, if you want to stay with us into the next um, segment, you can as well. I'll pull up chart six anyways, but I just wanted to say even, you know, with silver, I mean, seeing that, I mean, it was such like, uh, it hadn't been animated. I'm looking at the silver futures and just to see it kind of bump up to that 26, like, you know, like 35 level, it, it interested me a little bit, right? And I'd like to see silver get more attention as well. And I think kind of right. looking at this, that's actually not a bad forecast for it. But uh, Tim, stay right there and we'll, we'll have you on right after this break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, we are looking at the uh, the GDX right now, huh? Uh, no, let's go back to chart five. Perfect. Uh, so love it. Um, the. So this is a monthly chart. That doesn't mean silver is going to be up next day, but it has gave a, in my opinion, major buy signal probably back in late 2023. And uh, like I said before, these are not really whippy signals. Once they get on a buy signal or a sell signal, they stay there. So I'm thinking this this index, uh, silver, uh, silver miners is S I L. Uh, has turned up, so I'm thinking they're starting to perform. And actually, I own a couple of silver mines, and uh, they actually have performed pretty well. So this this is a bigger time frame. Uh, this rally, in my opinion, on the silver miners has started already. The bottom, my opinion's in. I guess the worst case scenario, you could test the low one more time, but I don't right. think that's going to happen. So, but there's there's too many good things. Uh, the valuation, which is bottom window, is where you like to see it. You know rock bottom and now you got the Bollinger Bands pinching so something is about to pop you know since it's a monthly chart doesn't mean it's going to pop today but it could pop you know next month month after uh it's, it'd be my opinion before June so but anyhow we can go to chart six now right on okay uh, we're looking at chart right. six right now there Tim yeah GDX is top window uh here's what I'm thinking is going on we uh we had a uh hidden this is a weekly chart of GDX. We had a head and shoulders pattern that formed where the October low is ahead. The right shoulder formed in the November time frame. You had a sign of strength through the neckline. And uh, it came back to the neckline, tested, went back up, went back down. And what I'm thinking, this sideways movement that's been going on for six weeks, is the right shoulder of a bigger head and shoulders bottom. The reason why I say that is because there's this consolidation. If you look back in in May, June, July of last year, you had a sideways pattern going on there, um, which I have left SH, that stands for left shoulder. So I'm thinking this is a left shoulder back in that time frame, and we're forming the right shoulder right now. Uh, and this left shoulder and right shoulder time-wise are usually pretty close in time. Uh, the left shoulder took about nine weeks to complete. We're in about number six weeks completing right now, so market may... Uh, Stay, I don't know, the word is not stagnant, but the market may trade in a range of 29 to, to 31 range over the next couple of weeks or three weeks. Then from there, I think we break above that neckline, which is on this bigger head and shoulders pattern around that 31, 32 area I got marked there. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking this is a multi, multi head and shoulders bottomed. We got a second one. Uh, developing, and we're developing on the right shoulder right now. And since October, if you notice, we've been making higher highs, higher lows mm -hmm. uh, over the last since last October, and that's the definition of an uptrend. Uh, so it's been really choppy uh, most of the year, going back all the way to June. And I think that choppiness is probably going to end later um, 
probably start in February. A lot of times February have big turns uh, in the market for um, gold, gold stocks. And I think that run could possibly start in February sometime and run all the way in probably October of uh, of this year is what's starting to look like. But it doesn't look like anything real meaningful is going to happen over the next uh, couple, three weeks. I'm, I'm thinking to form the right shoulder uh, of this bigger head and shoulders pattern, it probably is going to remain in a kind of a consolidation phase. So the bigger pattern is bullish. Uh, the short-term pattern is probably a little bit sideways. Sideway, yeah. We have support around 29, which is a smaller head and shoulders uh a support. We may possibly test that one more time. And then the larger one is up around that 31.32. So um, not a lot to talk about. I think on short term, SEMA is fine on it. There's other indicators that suggest uh, some of the larger move is also coming on on some of these star or some of these indexes. Uh, just like silver, I, I think is starting. So right. it could be a, a really big year for uh, the metals I'm starting to see is what it's starting to look like. No, it's definitely. Probably... And, and you know, we've also, I mean, exactly what you're saying here, and we, we kind of see it like just a little bit of a sideways movement in gold. You know, I, I look at a lot of the gold equities every day uh, with some of our portfolios and stuff. And um, I mean, anticipating something big, I know a lot of people, at least in the Tigers Den, are looking forward to that. And we're hoping to, you know, when it just moves sideways, you're just waiting for something to kind of pop with it. So these are awesome charts, Tim, seriously. All right. Uh, I hope it helps your readers and stuff. You know, yeah, it's, uh, absolutely. Sometimes you just got to be patient, wait for these signals to mature. And uh, some you got to act on. But between the two, I guess, silver and gold, silver is probably the one, the first one out of the, out of the ranks. If you start seeing that go, it'll probably head up before gold starts heading up because you like to see silver lead the rally and that's right. what's happening here so um you know i think it was chart what is that the previous chart? yeah that was previous five for, yep, five so for silver that's chart has, has already started to go so, love it uh, love it and folks listen if you know tim comes on tuesdays and thursdays if you like what he has to say we have on uh tiffinn.com you go to services he has two ones up currently Six ratios every trader should know, and then the secret signs of market tops. Both of these were fantastic. Um, I really strongly recommend it. Again, that's Tim Ord, the Ord-Oracle.com. Go give him a check out. Tim, thank you so much for coming on today. That, that was enlightening. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Sounds great, Tim. We'll see you Tuesday. Take care now. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. And again, guys, right over here on services, six secret ratios every trader should know, and then the secret signs of market tops. Love both of these. That is one of the, you know, we usually have these after work and some people are like, oh, you got to stay longer after work. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you get people like Tim Ward. You know, we have Teddy Kekstad on um, earlier last year. Basil just released one for him. These, these things are great. If you're really looking to like, if you, you know, if you don't know where to start, right? If you want to trade, you're kind of watching our programming. You like kind of being in it with the culture and everything like that, but you're not sure where to start. These are really one of the best things you can start with, okay? You come over here just to services. We have Tom O'Brien's Trade Methodology Webinar Archive, two of Tim's, Teddy Kekshat, two of his. We have Basil, Larry, I mean, everything, guys. You know, you can check out these newsletters. We don't have Tim's newsletter, um, but you know, these, are, these newsletters are all at least 30-day um, money-back guarantee. It's good stuff. Anyways, let's move back. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with right now. We only got a little bit until we have the break about a, uh, minute 20 on it but again this is a pretty sideways movement that we had going on we were expecting a little bit of a sell-off uh starting into january uh, we did see that you know that sets up taxes for the end of this year and everything like that take a look at the es mini we are flat russell flat again uh, nq flat everything just uh, entirely flat this market is waiting uh for something right it just it, it has some energy that'll build with it and we'll see whether we pop uh lower or higher with it before we add Tim on, we were talking, oh, you know what, actually, I do want to answer this question. I got an email. Uh, this is something just more on strategy uh, for crypto trading, right? Now, we don't talk a lot about crypto at TFNN, and that's, you know, that's fine and everything. Uh, there's a guy emailed me. He's investing in something called Pi, okay, and he wants to know um, whether or not he sells the whole thing or holds them. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get back from the break.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv welcome back folks uh to address what i was talking about before we went to break uh, one of the viewers uh was looking at pi i guess it's a crypto and i'm not gonna make any comment on the validity of pi or anything but the way it works what what he has is he wants to sell 50 percent when it becomes liquid and then take 50 percent and stake it okay so what it is now what's cool about this i guess blockchain is that you have to click it to give computing power as opposed to it just being a computer that's constantly working on the hash i think that would probably resolve some issues with like you know potential botnets or um consolidation of the coin once they're created uh, the only thing that I would think about, right, is that, one, this coin isn't liquid at all, okay? So, you know, you have whatever, like 100 coins, you can't do anything with that coin whatsoever. I'd assume the liquidity event is going to occur once all of them are mined, right? Or, you know, then there'll be some other kind of algorithm that you have to solve. But I would say that when, when you're staking crypto, right, this is a proof of stake, right? You get money back from it, which is, I think, what the viewers trying to do is stake half of that and just see if you can get some returns. But that is just meant to bring liquidity into the market. So if you have a bunch of people who are basically, you know, adding to this pie to get it, and there's, they're just expecting one big event and getting out, you don't want to stake, right? Um, and that's just more of like a logic thing. I don't know much about pie beyond that, other than that's kind of, you know, there's doing a proof of work and proof of stake concept. So I would say, you know, man, like, Figure like what that 
community wants to do. If it seems like people are in it just for one big buy and they don't really believe in the whole chain, you, you probably want to go 100% just out of the you know thing, whatever. Not even really like advice on it, but that's just the way I would think about it <clears throat> logically because if the community is not there, you're just staking your stuff, trying to create liquidity in a, a market where nobody is interacting, right? So you're kind of out of it on that point. Um, anyways, folks, thank you so much for joining me. That was fun. Tom will be back tomorrow. Um, go over all the good stuff you guys like with him. Uh, we had Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle on. Check him out. And folks, have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you soon.